Arab Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment. And I say this uh, with very, very serious heart indeed tonight, a very heavy heart about this prophetic uh, segment of the news. As you're seeing the title here, the Vatican intends to fake the millennium, the millennial reign itself. Uh, I want to take you back to 1993 when then uh, Prime Minister Shimon Peres uh, was already meeting with the Vatican and had promised Jerusalem to be given to Rome. And the intention was, was to, as he put it, uh, internationalize the city, bring in UN peacekeepers, make it an international city for all nations to be able to come and go. Uh, they also were working on a two-state solution that would include the, the, the Arab people, the Palestinians there, to have their own state. And, uh, and, and that one of the things that they were working on was building the third temple on top of the Temple Mount. Uh, and of course, that was, uh, had to be worked out with Yasser Arafat, and it was the one thing he refused to do. Now, in this particular meeting that uh, Shimon Perez was having then with the Vatican, the idea was to build the third temple alongside that of the Dome of the Rock. And, of course, it's, uh, it had, did not come to pass. Yasser Arafat refused to do it. And, of course, he mysteriously dies uh, not long, uh, well, been several years after that. But he never would go along with it. In any of the peace agreements, he refused to allow a third temple. And then, of course, he dies. Now Mahmoud Abbas has taken his place. And as we reported to you recently, all the changes that are happening around Jerusalem and other parts of the country, they are preparing not only to change the borders in Israel, but also to internationalize the city of Jerusalem. Very obvious. I want to take you to the scripture, though, to share with you from the book of Micah, chapter 4. Now let's just read this here, verse 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of God, of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways." And we will walk in the paths, for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now, the he is the Messiah, but it doesn't actually say that there. And that leaves room for the Vatican to be able to fake a millennial reign. Let me read to you a little bit more. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts hath spoken it. For all people will, uh, will walk, every one in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Now, it's interesting the words that are being said here because this is exactly what uh, many of the Jewish people in Israel believe as well, that there will be a third temple. They do know that the prophecy clearly says in Micah that it'll be a, uh, uh, the house of God will be a prayer house for all nations. But the ironic thing is, is what are the Jewish people willing to do to be able to get a third temple built? Now, clearly, according to Ezekiel, Ezekiel's temple there that he prophesies of would not even fit on the Temple Mount. So that is truly what I consider to be the true third temple. And the temple that they're planning on building in the very near future, no doubt, will be funded by the Vatican. And I can't back that up right now, but I believe that that has been stated before. They've offered to fund the building of this third temple. And I believe it will be beside the Dome of the Rock. So, therefore, it would give the Pope of Rome the ability to rule from Israel as possibly their Messiah. Now, keep in mind, Pope Francis doesn't have to be the last Pope for this to take place. There could be another guy that comes up after him, and maybe he's not actually considered a Pope, but yet he comes from the papal reign nonetheless. I can't really say that. It looks to me that Pope Francis is certainly an excellent candidate because he's fitting all the qualities of a charismatic leader, one world order, 
wanting to bring in, he's going to the political side to exercise his temporal power over the world. So it is very obvious that he is certainly setting the stage possibly for him own self or even for a successor after him. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to uh, also though, let's read down further though, because it looks like that some bad things happen after this happens, but actually it's not. What it is is God is sharing with you the millennial reign to start with, but then he shows you some of the things that are going to precede the building of the third temple. Let's look at that. In that day saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have aff uh, afflicted. That's the children of Israel. According to Zechariah, the house of Judah comes home first, followed by the house of Israel later. He says, I will make her that halted a remnant and her that was cast out of a strong nation, and the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forevermore. And thou wilt tower the flock, stronghold of the daughter of Zion, and to thee shall it come. Even the first dominion, the kingdom, shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Now why dost thou cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished, for pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. This is clearly showing that Israel is about to go through a major transformation. And God asks a very serious question, is there no king in thee? Why? Because Israel, when they had Samuel the prophet, wanted a king. They didn't want Samuel to lead them, they wanted a king to lead them in the different courses of life that they would do. God gave them a king, but it was against God's desire. So therefore, when Israel gets into a place here in the very near future where Prime Minister Netanyahu doesn't seem to be able to deliver them, which is exactly what we're seeing now, the Prime Minister has basically been totally silent on the Vatican's call for a two states and recognizing the Palestinians as a state themselves. The only thing that he was courageous enough to do was to say that Jerusalem will never be divided. Well, that could be just a play on words because if Jerusalem is going to be the international city, then it doesn't have to be divided. But then again, the sovereignty will not lie with Israel either. Just as we were told at the Temple Institute by one of the rabbis there is that Jerusalem is not under the control of Israel. Whose control is it under then? So he says, has thy counselor perished? And I believe that's a direct reference to the Messiah himself, Yeshua, when he came and he died. And now God is reminding them, you wanted a king. Where is he? Netanyahu's not delivering you from your enemies, you, your counselor, Yeshua, had he already perished? Okay, then watch what he says after that. For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. See, it's the daughter of Zion, not Zion herself, but the daughter, the future generation that shows. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon, there shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. That's so much in that verse alone. You're going to go out of the city because why? Jerusalem will be an international city. You see, you're going to go out of the city. You'll even go to Babylon, Rome itself. You're going, he's prophesying that you'll go to Rome. You're going to go to Babylon to make a deal. And he says, there you will be delivered from the hand of your enemy enemies. Who was Israel's enemy? It was Esau. Obadiah clearly shows us that Titus, the Roman general, who was accused by God in the book of Obadiah for standing by and letting his brother Jacob be killed, and God called him Esau. And he says the house of Judah clearly identified who Rome is. It's Esau's descendants. And today the Pope of Rome is there. And they're there to divide the land, to come up strong with a small people. That's the Palestinians, according to Daniel chapter 11. And they're ripping the city apart, and they're making an international city. Oh gosh, this, is, this has got me riled up majorly to see what's going on. I'm going to bring some other things out in just a second. But anyway, the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Now, why does he say that? Another reason, when Yeshua was here on the earth, his disciples wanted to be delivered from who? The Romans. And therefore, the Romans must again, once again, be in control of Israel, of Jerusalem, the whole state, the whole country. They're going to get control of this. And what happens? Israel's going to want to be delivered from them. So God, again, must send the Messiah, Yeshua. The stage is reset like it was when he left. The stage is reset. He comes back to do what? To deliver Israel from the hand of her enemies, from Esau himself. 
Unbelievable. Anyway, it says in verse 11, Now also many nations are gathered against thee that say, Let her be defiled and let our eye look upon Zion. Wow. Let her be defiled? 136 nations have already agreed to divide Israel. After the Pope made the proclamation, they all started jumping on board. Now watch this. And let our eye look upon Zion. They already took Mount Zion from Israel. And, and what does that also mean? They want to fake a millennial reign. And the Pope of Rome is trying to fake a millennial reign. And they're going to go in and out of the city. You know, it's funny because me, me, tonight I had a conversation with, with Brother Kellen uh, Davison of uh, David Star Magazine. This is something he has been believing himself for, for some time. Uh, we both have shared this same view already. And another brother, I, won't even, I don't want to mention his name because I didn't ask him if I could say this uh, with him, but I was sharing this with him as well. And it was a shock to him. But that's exactly what is coming. They're going to try to fake it. This is why Netanyahu's not saying anything. He knows. My Israeli brothers, he already knows that they're going to internationalize this city. He's got to keep his mouth shut. And no disrespect to the prime minister. I love him. I, I, my heart feels for him. He's under the pressure that he's under. But the beautiful thing is, in Daniel, we find out that they're going to break the covenant. And then Israel will come out from under that bondage. He will, God will send his two witnesses, and that will really mess this whole plan that they got up, because they're going to mess up their little millennial reign. See, God is going to raise a standard against it. Satan is coming in like a flood, and God is going to react to that flood that Satan's coming in like. All right? So what are they doing? They're internationalizing. Brother Paul Bagley on a news broadcast, I talked to him about all these signs that I had been seeing. I shared it with you guys here on Israeli News Live that they're building on Highway 1, they're building huge arches coming up, and, and many cars are routing around this now, but they're making these arches on the highway with, with, with harness, wire harnesses coming up out of the ground there. They're making a checkpoint from Tel Aviv into Jerusalem. Why do Israelis need to go through a checkpoint to get into Jerusalem? It's because the city is going to be internationalized. If they're doing this, do you think that the people in the Knesset do not know what's going on? Sure they know. And yes, Prime Minister Netanyahu can say they're not going to divide the city. That's right. Notice he only said Jerusalem. Why didn't he say the rest of the country? He skirted around that one. It's ripping his heart apart to know what they're going to do. Let me read to you one more verse. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel, for he shall gather them as the sheaves unto, into, the, uh, un, into the floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hooves brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. By the way, Matthew 24, when Yeshua says, when this gospel is preached unto all the earth, then the end will come. What gospel? The gospel is, the, is setting the captives free. What Yeshua read in Isaiah 61. Remember, he read verse 1, and he left off half of verse 2, the latter half of it, because why? It's to bring judgment. That is the true gospel. How is he going to bring judgment? When he brings the two witnesses, they will bring judgment. They will bring down this fake millennial reign. They will expose the post of Rome for who he really is and then Israel will be delivered from their enemies finally and then and Yeshua himself will step back upon this earth and he will begin to wipe out everything that gets in the way God said to Moses he says to him I will do wonders with you like you've never done before and I'm paraphrasing this I will do wonders with you and the rabbis even today they said maybe we should not translate it as wonders because Moses never did anything greater than the parting of the Red Sea and, and the plagues that were down in Egypt but God in a future time well past all those events says to Moses he's going to do wonders with him and he's going to bring an evil thing a judgment against those people that have come against Israel now the, the ironic thing is is that he even says to Moses when you come in the land now how could God say to him when you come in the land when God already knows he wasn't going to let him in the land because he smote the rock when God said to only speak the rock but God knows he's going to come in a second time. Whether it's a man anointed with his spirit or Moses himself, 
I don't know, but I'm telling you, he's coming. He's coming to Jerusalem, and God warned him, don't make any covenants. And so I say to my rabbi brothers in Israel today, don't make any covenants with Rome. That's what they want you to do. And I know there's so much desperation to be able to get the third temple built and, and, and to be a part to, to worship the Lord once again in a, in a temple that is dedicated to him. I understand your desire, but it's of the devil because it's not going to be of God. Ezekiel's temple is the one that is of God. This one is something that the Rome is putting forth to bring to you a fake millennial reign, and it will not be of God. Uh, God have mercy. I'm Stephen Vanoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And one other thing, let me just say this in closing. Brother Paul interviewed that Jewish brother, and he said that Brother Steve is right. They are doing not just there. They are changing borders. They're already putting checkpoints, check stations, and other places. He said, it's amazing what they're doing. He said, but we can see it. Something's happening. They're changing the boundaries. And yes, they're making more checkpoints coming into Jerusalem. He said, in places that should be Jewish. Why are they doing it? I don't know. But he said, they're doing it. And I'll try to remember to put the link to Brother Paul Begley's video with that brother there so you can see what I'm talking about. It's not just Brother Steve. It's happening. You know what? We know it's going to happen, but at least be a voice. Stand up. God will... Love you for taking a stand for his people. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Remember us in our traveling. We desperately need you in this, in this traveling that we're doing because there's so much we're trying to do for our people to bring them more of the gospel, to bring more of these important news broadcasts, pro prophetic broadcasts, and you're the ones that make that happen, and we desperately need your support in doing that. And the only reason I ask is because the Bible says, if you ask, you shall receive. And God has always been kind to us. And you guys have been tremendously wonderful to us. We love you.